So this video is gonna talk about a guided programming offer from Garrett Blevins, Ben Rice, and myself. But before we get into that, I do wanna say that I've been paying for my own coaching services over the past couple of years. And quite honestly, it's one of the best investments that I could make in addition to the rack and all the Ivanko plates you see behind me but those were a lot more expensive than what I've sunk into coaching services. I just gotta say that. And the reason I really like coaching is the fact that they've really opened my eyes to progress and results I didn't think was still possible given number one, my training age, which is 20 years in the gym. Number two, my real age, which is 35 years old, no spring chicken anymore. I just become accustomed to the slow progress that I've seen over the past couple of years. I thought I reached my true potential, if you will. And it wasn't from lack of trying. Obviously I tried my best to educate myself, tried a bunch of different programs, learned about nutrition, but it is what it is. I thought I reached my true potential, but working with coaches, I've been opened up to a whole new world of gains and it's been awesome. And it's not just me, obviously, there's a lot of people on YouTube that I follow that end up hiring coaches and start seeing insane strength progress, which is both inspiring and infuriating because I want all the gains to myself, but also in the world of powerlifting, people are setting world records at almost every single meet. Case in point, the current coach I'm working with now, Bryce Lewis, as well as my good buddy, Garrett Blevins, who you guys are gonna hear from in just a second. They just finished first and second, respectively, at the most recent USAPL Raw Nationals. And Garrett, particularly, who finished second, by the way, had a total of 1,912 pounds, which is roughly 400 pounds plus more than my best total ever. That's a bit humbling in my opinion, but to put it even in further perspective, a couple of months earlier, there was IPF Classics, and as part of that, the person who finished first in the world had a total that was still 50 pounds less than what Garrett was able to do at the most recent USAPL Raw National. So imagine that. Here you have someone coming in second place whose total is 50 pounds heavier than the world title holder. Really amazing in my opinion. And as part of that, Garrett has a coach, Bryce has a coach. Pretty much everyone you can think of that's successful has some sort of coach behind them because there's always people that are better and smarter about things than you are. I'm trying to convince myself that. And for me personally, having a coach is great because it takes all the stress and anxiety that I typically put on myself when I did my own programming away and it's really helped in my overall lifting. And as part of that, some of the best coaches out there also put out some of the best free information. So as part of that, before Garrett gets to his offer, I want you guys to just listen to some programming talk as I think it'd be helpful regardless if you choose to go forward with the services or not. Thanks for that introduction, Brandon. Uh, I wanna talk to you today a little bit about programming, uh, and specifically the programming that I've been running with my athletes uh, for about the past year and a half. I've been in the search of optimal programming for strength training for quite a long time. I've always been a student of the sport and I've always been intrigued by programming and the different ways in which people program. Basically, um, what I've figured out is that all good strength programs follow a couple of key principles. Um, the principle of overload, the principle of specificity uh, are both extremely important. One, you need to be doing exercises specific enough to your goals that you're actually going to be moving towards your goals. If your goal is to be a marathon runner and you're doing one rep max squats, you're probably working against yourself a little bit because those are different proficiencies. Likewise, if you go to the gym day after day after day and you do the same thing over and over and over again, your body is going to adapt to that stimulus to the point where when you go to the gym and do that, your body is not gonna do anything because it can handle that stimulus with its current level of adaptation, and it's not gonna be forced to go to a new level. Um, that means that you have to have an overload principle in your training. Now, overload can be uh, a good thing and a bad thing. It can be a bad thing if you overload too much, and that's why auto-regulation is such an important thing. If you overload too much, if you're constantly adding more and more weight each week, for example, with the same exercises, Eventually, your ability to adapt and continue lifting heavier loads is not going to keep up with the pace that you're increasing the weight on the bar, and you're going to either start overtraining, stalling out, or missing lifts. All things that you don't want to do, because every time you miss a lift, you're reinforcing bad form. One of the ways that you can avoid overloading too much is by auto-regulating your training with something called fatigue drops. What a fatigue drop is, is you start with an initial set let's say you work up to an RPE 8, which means for whatever set you're doing, you're leaving two reps in the tank. RPE 8s are kind of the bread and butter of training, in my opinion, because they're heavy enough to where you can say, hmm, I only had two reps left, as opposed to an RPE 6, where you're trying to figure out if you had four reps left. Um, it's a lot easier if you're doing a set of 10 to know if you could have done two more reps 
instead of doing a set of 10 and trying to figure out if you had four or five more reps. And that's why RPEs that are a little higher, um, eights and nines especially, are very easy to determine, um, at least easier than RP sixes and RP sevens. But let's say you're working up to uh, an initial set at RP eight for a set of 10. You would load up the bar, um, you would do your warmups, and you would kind of have an estimation in your mind of where you're gonna end up. Uh, you're gonna work up close, probably about 90% of where you think you can end up. Let's say you think you can do 225 on squats for a set of 10. Probably work up to about 195, um, maybe do a set of 10 there. Then maybe uh, another set at 210 to kind of feel out and make sure you're feeling good that day and that you're on track to perform as you normally would. And then you would work up to that set of uh, 225. If at the end of that set of 225, you said to yourself, yeah, I think I had two reps left, you would put that number in for your initial set, and then you would do a percentage drop from that weight. Let's say it's a 10% a drop of 25 pounds, um, or 22 and a half pounds, you would round it. Uh, so you're gonna start with 200 pounds bar weight, and then you would repeat those sets of 10 with 200 pounds until they felt like a certain RPE. Maybe you would repeat that fatigue drop until it felt like an eight again. Maybe you would repeat that fatigue drop until it felt like an RP9. Um, it could be anything, but that's kind of the way that fatigue drops work. The thing is, if you're more tired going into a workout, you're gonna have less back offsets than you would if you go into the gym and you feel great. Let's say you've been undercutting those initial set RPEs a little bit over the past few weeks. So you're extra recovered and you feel pretty darn good. Well, then you may be able to do like three, four, maybe five back offsets with a 10% fatigue drop. Uh, likewise, if you're feeling really beat up, you've been pushing really hard, you might only get one or two back offsets. And so even though you're using the same training, it can auto-regulate for you. That makes sure that you don't overreach and overload too much too often, as long as your program has reasonable initial sets programmed into it. That's one of the things that I use a lot now in my training, whereas I used to use AMRAPs. Um, there's nothing wrong with AMRAPs, and they can have their place in training. But one of the issues with AMRAPs in training is that your form may start to break down. Depending upon the personality of the lifter, you'll have some people that really push those AMRAPs, and every week they need a PR, and so they'll even sacrifice form to get a couple extra reps to extend their estimated one rep maxes over the previous week. But the thing about strength training is, you may not make progress every week, and that's okay. Um, it just means that you've incurred more fatigue and you're not able to display that strength. You should always be making progress, but that doesn't always equate to seeing more weight on the bar. And that's one of the things that you'll learn the longer you train. That said, all good training programs are gonna have that specificity and that overload, but you need to know how to manage it properly. Um, I've worked with hundreds of athletes over the last year and a half and seen tremendous progress. Um, pretty much across the board, the way that I do training, I don't test a whole lot. I have a lot of building, especially with novices, intermediates, and early advanced lifters, uh, because there's no need to test frequently. Um, instead, spend most of your time building. And I pretty much advise that for almost all athletes, except for maybe people at the very top who are peaking or who are maintaining their weights through very low volumes. Um, you might think of people like the Lillibridge method, who seem to be going heavy and setting PRs all the time with very low volume training um, in comparison to some of the higher frequency DUP style training you see out there. The reason why they can do that is because the loads that they're lifting are so heavy, they're getting a tremendous training stimulus even from lower volume work. But for the vast majority of people out there in the world who are pursuing strength or pursuing powerlifting, they're gonna need more volume and more frequency. One of the best ways to do that is with DUP training. Uh, DUP stands for Daily Undulating Periodization. And what that means is that you're using slightly different rep ranges, or in some cases very different rep ranges, within the same week. Um, it means on your, you know, your day one workout you might be doing bench for sets of 10. Uh, your day two workout or your, your next workout, maybe on Wednesday, uh, a couple days later in the week, you do some sevens. And then on the, uh, the last workout, last bench workout you have of the week, you're doing threes. Now, personally, I don't like to split things up quite that much. I think if you're training tens, sevens, and threes all in the same training block, it's a little bit too different for your body really to adapt and be good at any one of those rep ranges. I cluster the rep ranges closer together. I might have uh, tens, eights, and sixes. Um, that might be about as big as the spread I would have. Um, 
and that will slide a little bit depending on how many reps you're doing or how low the reps are. But in general, having about four reps different is something that I've seen work better than having you know sets of 10 and doubles in the same week. Your body is going to adapt to those rep ranges differently. And so you need to spend time in one of them so that your body can fully adapt and gain the adaptations that you can have from that rep range. Let's say sets of 10 on squat, that's gonna train your aerobic ability. That's going to pay off when you start having to do lots of repeated sets with lower rep ranges to keep your volume high enough to keep driving adaptation because you're not going to be winded and out of breath and just generally fatigued because the sets are going to be so much shorter you're going to be able to handle it since you're used to a longer set. So you're going to train different proficiencies at different times. Um, what that comes down to and the fancy name for that is phase potentiation but really what it means is you organize your training in an intelligent manner so that you work on different proficiencies at different times so that they build on one another leading up eventually to a new one rep max. The nice thing about RPE training though is if you're working up to a set and it's at an RPE instead of a set percentage of an old one rep max, you're not stuck, um, you're not kinda closed in to doing a single weight, especially if you're a early intermediate, a novice lifter, you're going to be getting stronger almost week to week, certainly month to month. And so if you're on a longer training block, you don't want to lower those numbers and make them rigidly based on percentages because you may be a lot stronger. You may be uh, doing sets of five with your old one rep max. I cannot tell you how many clients I've had who just even a third of the way through or halfway through the program were doing sets of five or sets of three with weights that they had never even lifted for a one rep max before. That's the good thing about RPE training because based on how you're feeling, you put the weight on the bar. And that helps you pick the right weight to put on the bar at the right time. Additionally, that combined with fatigue drops helps you have the right amount of volume so that you do not exceed your maximum recoverable volume. Maximum recoverable volume is a very variable thing. It's kind of like metabolism. It can change depending on what sorts of environments you've been in and what you've adapted to. Um, for example, my maximum recoverable volume with sets of 10 with a safety squat bar is going to be very different after I've trained that for a few weeks at the beginning of a training cycle as compared to my maximum recoverable volume with triples um, with low bar back squats with a belt. Because I lift a lot more with a low bar back squat for a triple, I'm not going to be able to match the volume that I do with a safety squat bar for sets of 10. Even though the weight on the safety squat bar is going to be a lot less and the volume is going to end up being more because I'm going to do maybe, let's say I do 5 sets of 10, there's 50 reps. Imagine doing 50 reps of triples. I mean, that, that would be an abysmal workout. The reason being, if I'm doing sets of 3 with back squats, I'm going to be lifting a lot more weight than I am with safety squat bar for sets of 10. Also, I'm going to be doing a lot of repetitions though with the safety squat bar. Let's say I do four sets of 10, um, I'm going to have 40 total reps. Uh, 40 total reps, even at 400 pounds, that's uh, 16,000 pounds of total volume. If I tried to amass that same 16,000 pounds of total volume with uh, low bar back squat triples, I don't think I could ever recover from that workout. It would just be a terrible idea. The reason being, even if I was using 600 pounds for those triples, um, substantially more than the safety squat bar, let, let's say I was using, uh, well, let's do 600 because it's easy to do mental math that way. Uh, so 600 for a set of three, that's 1,800 pounds of volume. Uh, to take 1,800 pounds of volume, um, I would have to be doing something like eight sets of three. That'd be a rough, really rough workout. Way different than four sets of 10 with safety squat bar. I could probably do four sets of 10 with the safety squat bar I don't know, uh, at least twice a week. I couldn't be doing eight sets of three um, twice a week uh, with those sorts of percentages on low bar back squat. It would just be a little bit too taxing. Um, so that's the difference. There's different maximum recoverable volumes in different rep ranges with different exercises and different intensities. Um, that said, if you're auto-regulating your training um, with whatever tool you use, but fatigue drops don't require special equipment, they don't require tendo units, um, and also if you don't have a coach there watching you to see um, and having a conversation with you about how you feel, it's about the best you can do, um, in my opinion. It's the best that I've found so far. And so if you have uh, fatigue drops, that's going to help you manage 
where your maximum recoverable volume levels are. The programs that I create as well track volume so that you can look at those cycle to cycle and see how you respond in various rep ranges. Now, that said, a lot of people wonder why DUP? Um, what's the purpose of DUP and why is it better than just regular old linear periodization? Because in general, in all good programs, as you have that progressive overload, you are going to decrease your volume slightly throughout the training cycle as you increase intensity. As you increase intensity, you are going to have to lower the rep ranges. That just goes hand in hand with it. And so you're going to start with more reps and also, if you have good phases, exercises that are more of a variation from your one rep max exercise that you would be doing in a competition. And you're going to be using higher volumes early on. Uh, they're going to taper off um, dramatically at the end of the training cycle, but somewhat slowly throughout the entire cycle. Um, that's just basic programming. And even that sort of uh, idea can be applied to linear periodization, in which case you would just lower the uh, rep ranges you use every week across the board, or daily undulating periodization, where you may be using a cluster of different rep ranges, maybe 10s on one day, 8 on another, and 7s on another. But you're going to be lowering those reps as you go through your various cycles. Um, the program that I'm planning to run with Brandon Campbell is a little different than we've done in the past. Traditionally, I've worked on five week uh, micro cycles, but I'm going to be lowering that to four weeks. The reason why is if you lower it to four weeks, you can have more phases so you can target specific areas a little bit better. Um, you really want to work on your weaknesses in a thought out and planned manner. And so when I talk about coaching and guided programming specifically, uh, the programs that I create aren't a one size fits all template. Uh, they all have a similar structure, but the exercises specifically are chosen based off of where people are weak in the lifts. Weak point assessment is very important for ongoing progress because if you're strong at a lift and you keep strengthening that lift, um, but you're weak in one part, it's the weakest link in the chain that's going to break. And that's where you're going to miss your reps. Maybe you're just really strong off the floor with deadlifts, but you can't lock them out. Well, if you keep working on getting strong off the floor, you're still going to have lockout problems. You need to attack your weaknesses as well as build your strengths. And that's something I plan into all these programs. That said, um, since they're in four week blocks, I'm extending the number of them. So there's going to be six cycles that are going to be run together. Um, basically, it's going to function on about a 50 50 split of off season, in season, but there's a lot of overlap because they're shorter cycles. And so some of them are going to be almost hybrid cycles. It's almost hard to categorize them. Uh, they're formed much more around exercise selection than they are around a rigid, this is off season, we're doing all variations this cycle, or this is in season, we're doing all competitions lifts. Uh, there's going to be a lot more fluidity within the program. Um, that said, I think DUP works better than just regular linear periodization, if for the only fact that it's more fun in my opinion. Um, doing the same rep ranges every day for an entire week and then maybe doing a couple weeks in those rep ranges, there's a lot of training monotony. Instead, when you have RPE, when any day you go to the gym, you have something new, it's more exciting. And the program that's more exciting that you get charged up about, that you are excited about, is the one that you're going to put more energy and effort into. Also, you're not going to hold yourself back because you're not going to have the same expectations that you would have with linear periodization. And linear periodization, oftentimes, that goes hand in hand with the future method. What the future method is, is you figure out what number you want to hit at the end of the block, and then you kind of work your training back from that in a linear fashion until you get to manageable training. Well, at that point, you've locked yourself into some number that you've picked, but why did you pick that number? Instead, I think it's much more optimal, and optimal is always what I think we should be looking for, to use RPE. Because you may surprise yourself, and as you go through the program, instead of seeing your squat go up 20 pounds, it might go up 80 pounds. I've had many athletes who came away from the program lifting weights they never expected to lift. And you gain the confidence to make those kinds of jumps when you are repping your old one rep max and you're only five weeks into the program or ten weeks into the program, knowing that you have a lot of other blocks where you're going to be able to build on that even more. Um, it's one of the reasons why as a coach I like to see people use an auto-regulated program where they can push themselves, where they're not setting limitations. There's so many reasons in life why people limit themselves. There's so many times people look, they'll go to calculators on the internet or they'll, they'll look at uh, FFMI and they, they look at these numbers and they think that these studies are the be-all end-all. 
you have to realize those studies are just put out by people. They're looking at some data points. They're putting out what they think is the best research. But we're learning more and more every day about what humans are capable of and about what we can do. Um, just look at the numbers in strength sports, especially powerlifting, over the last five years. Compare the national champions from the USAPL Raw Nationals this year to the first Raw Nationals that there was. It's a dramatic difference, even in a short period of time. And I think we're going to look back at some point um, at some of the limitations we've put on what people can do and kind of just chuckle about it to ourselves because people limited. Um, it's funny, you see one person squat a thousand. Ray Williams just squatted a thousand five um, in sleeves. I guarantee you that there's going to be three, four, five, ten people lifting that weight um, over the next few years. The reason why is because as soon as somebody breaks one barrier in powerlifting, it seems like there's a bunch of other people that can do it too. Uh, this was the case in the 105 weight class, uh, the class I lift in. Uh, nobody had broken 1900, and then Yuri Belkin finally breaks it, and everybody kind of looks at that and says, oh, we can do that. And then you have person after person after person breaking that 1900 pound barrier. Um, so you never know. You never know what you can do until you try. And that's one of the reasons why I really like RPE training, because it allows you to push yourself. Um, that said, you don't want to push yourself too hard, and one of the benefits of guided programming isn't just the template, it's that there's a community of people around you going through the program with you. And in the Facebook group that we have, or the forum, you can post videos and you can have people who have been training for a long time, Brandon, myself, or just other clients who will go through and look at those videos and help you. Um, they'll give you their two cents on what your RP is and maybe even give you some form advice. Um, there's a weekly coaching call and you can actually post one to three sets in the coaching call for a more in-depth form review and I'll do in a voiceover video uh, a critique of what you should work on and maybe even some exercises that should be changed in your current programming to help hit some weaknesses that didn't show up through the questionnaire that you answered. Um, that's what you're really paying for when you do guided programming. It's not the template even though the template is custom and I really like those. Um, I think there's, there's been a lot of effort put into them, and they're very effective. But it's not just the template that's important. It's the coaching service itself. So if you're interested in that, uh, there'll be more information on the website. I hope you'll check it out. I hope this video was informative. I really like talking about programming. If you have any specific questions, uh, feel free to throw those um, in the comments below. And uh, Brandon and myself will try to get to those as fast as we can and see if we can just help you, whether you're interested in the coaching service or not. Uh, with your own training and how to plan and understand phase potentiation, uh, stimulus recovery, adaptation, uh, maximum recoverable volume, um, principles of overload and specificity, and anything else that you might come up with. Um, I appreciate your time and thanks for watching. Blessings. Now, don't get me wrong, coaching is definitely a luxury, but I think it's a worthwhile investment if strength is a priority for you. And as part of that, what makes this offer so great is that Garrett offers these in four week blocks at a price that's actually competitive to what some people are charging for a weekly basis without having to commit to several months at a time like they usually require. In addition to the programming from Garrett, you're also gonna get insight from Ben Rice, insight from myself, access to a private forum, private Facebook page, as well as a community of other lifters who are all trying to get strong as well. If you sign up before the start of 2017, Garrett's offering at a special rate, at which time after 2017, the rate will go up. So if you're looking for the perfect gift this holiday season, why not the gift of gains? If you're interested in the guided programming, you'll find more information in the description box below. Regardless, hopefully you guys got some out of Garrett's talk as I found it very insightful and I can apply that to my own training as well. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.